Four three six six. Yes. Four four one eight. Yep. Four three six five. Yep. Welcome to Laptop Power Episode seventy seven. Pack sorting options. Now that I have cleared out the power shelf and used all those beautifully sorted cells to fill the second small blocks pack that I built in the last episode. It's time for me to reload the power shelf and sort those new cells. So I thought I would use this opportunity to look at various sorting um, options to try and get a sense of um, what's the best way to go. Because the Schwankme sort uh, is very nice um, for some people a bit over the top and it takes a bit of time. So let's talk through um, the various options. Me and my friend John typed in all the capacities of the 84 pairs of cells. Then I, I randomised that list and slapped those into this array to give a sense of what you might get if you just threw the cells into your pack without any sorting whatsoever. And the group average capacity is 52,421 milliamp hours, or 52 amp hours, and the greatest divergence from that average is minus 822 there for that group, plus 566 for that group. So it's not too bad. It's like we're still talking less than 1% divergence. For any collection larger than this, it's probably fine just to throw the cells in, in randomly. The only possible catch is that if you throw the cells in non-randomly, like for example, if you accidentally fed the cells in from the lowest, and you put all the low ones in here, and all the high ones in here, then you'd get an out of whack pack, and the the BMS, assuming you've got a BMS, would have to work a bit harder to keep them balanced. So just throwing them in willy-nilly is not quite the same as a perfectly random sort. So you that's a possibility of throwing them in randomly. The simplest sorting arrangement is to do a zigzag sort. So if you put all your cells in order from highest capacity to lowest capacity and then just start feeding your cells into the groups that you're putting them in. So I'm, in this case I'm going for a 7S12P, seven, gro seven groups of 12. So you feed them in from left to right and then from right to left across the seven groups and so on and work your all the way, way down. Uh, then you can see that the divergence is not bad at all. When you think of it as a percentage, it's really fine. And definitely that is an option. Then there's the, sh the Schwankme procedure, which I managed to get to this result here, which is ridiculously precise. Um, it took me over half an hour to get there. And this, these last two groups here were really tricky. Uh, the last time I did a, a Schwankme sort, I just had to sort along the lines, whereas I got down to this, these two columns here, and they were minus 80 something and plus 80 something, and there, were, there was nothing easier, easy. So I had to start um, jiggling cells um, diagonally and all over the place. It took me ages. But I ended up with quite a nice sort. Then the Fourth way that you can sort your cells is using a new app that is called repacker.com. This site here, which allows you to take the cells that you've typed in, slap them in there, paste them in there, then tell it how many cells, how many groups and series you're going to have. I'm going to have 7 and 12, um, 12 cells in parallel in each of those seven groups, and then you hit generate, 
and it thinks about that for about two seconds, and then whammo, done. That's your first group, that's your second group, and so on. And that's it. And then you can also cut, um, cut and paste that back into a spreadsheet if you're as, as nerdy as I am. And it tells you how what the divergence is. So 0, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, and 0, which is sadly way better than I manage with my laborious spunk me sort. So if you're going to do something more sophisticated than the zigzag sort, you should definitely go straight to repacker.com. One interesting thing is each time you hit generate packs, it produces a slightly different result. Minus one, zero, 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 minus one, zero, zero, um, which is slightly different. The first time I ran it, I got this result here, which I thought, oh, minus 616, that's not nearly as good as I can manage with my spunky sort. And then when I hit it the second time, it, it did this one here, which is better than um, I could ever do. Sadly, um, <laughs> don't bother doing the spunky sort anymore. Just go straight to repacker.com and, and use that because it is brilliant and simple and quick. I heartily recommend it. So now that I've done that, uh, my next step is to put these cells, this arrangement, uh, into the power shelf and then connect that up to the rest of the system, run that for a while, monitor it every morning and night, and I will up Date you on how it's gone in about a week's time. For those who are extra geeky, the original code for this sort was written by a guy, Dex Wood, who emailed me straight after I'd done the Shmunk Me sort video and said, ah, you could have a play with this, this routine here. And it turns out that he's utilizing a technique called simulated annealing. I heartily recommend pop over to Wikipedia and read about this. It's kind of amazing. So normal annealing in metallurgy is the process whereby you, after you've forged, uh, you've um, beaten your sword on your um, with your big mallet and your bulging muscles and the sweat and the heat, from the bellows, you um, heat up your your sword, and then you plunge it into cold water, and that's the annealing process, which apparently uh, increases the size of crystals and reduces the defects. And that technique was then used as the inspiration for a probabilistic uh, software routine that finds optimum solutions in a fixed amount of time uh, when you've got an array of numbers. It's amazing. Uh, fantastic. So um, definitely have a read through that. That's really fascinating. Cool. Excellent geekery. So that code was then taken up by Chris Bird, who used it to um, power this, this um, app that you can use. And he has got the the background software for all this is up on uh, GitHub. So if you're a developer, you can come and play with that or help Chris develop it further. He's been tweaking and fiddling, making it better and better. So I heartily recommend having a look at simulated annealing. It's pretty fascinating. Have a play with repacker.com. It is a very useful tool. One other thought. This, using repacker.com is probably even more important if you have a smaller pack, because the smaller the pack, the more important it is to try to balance the pack so that your BMS doesn't have to work too hard. The more precisely balanced your groups are, the less work your balance um, circuitry should have to do, and that is a useful useful feature. If you're using hundreds of cells, like uh, Peter over at HP Powerwall, then this is um, probably way too much work, but over the top and not necessary, and you can just throw them in randomly. 
if you had like 100 cells in parallel, then it is likely that these divergences will become less and less significant given the overall size of the group. So, there you are. Go over and have a play with repacker.com. It's great. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers. Thank you.